A cordial greeting? Today is Sunday, June 2, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In today's video, I will be discussing several disturbances located in the Atlantic Basin and the Eastern Pacific region. The first is a low-pressure area located south of Guerrero, with a low probability of cyclonic development in the coming hours. I will also talk about the interaction of various atmospheric systems that will bring rainy days to eastern Cuba, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, Haiti, and the southern Bahamas. Then, in the second part of the video, I will discuss how atmospheric conditions may become much more favorable for cyclonic development in the Atlantic Basin, particularly in the eastern Pacific, the Bay of Campeche, and the western Caribbean Sea. Let's start by talking about the low pressure located south of Mexico in the waters of the Pacific. In the infrared satellite image, we can clearly see the formation of intense thunderstorms and some rotation associated with this low pressure. This low pressure emerged from the first tropical wave of the season, which crossed Central America and, upon reaching the waters of the eastern Pacific, gained some organization. Although the National Hurricane Center maintains the probability of developing a tropical depression at 10% over the next 48 hours, starting Monday and Tuesday, atmospheric conditions will not be favorable for further development, and it seems unlikely to become a tropical cyclone. Additionally, the heaviest rainfall will remain south of Mexico, so this phenomenon will not alleviate the drought and heat affecting much of Mexico. On the other hand, we have the second tropical wave of the season south of Jamaica, and the third wave is located south of Puerto Rico. We also have an upper-level trough over Cuba and Jamaica. The interaction of these three systems is causing rain and instability across the central and northeastern Caribbean, where skies will be mostly cloudy, and precipitation will affect the region at least until Wednesday. As we projected, conditions are not favorable for cyclonic formation, so no models predict cyclonic development, and the National Hurricane Center has not marked the area as of interest for cyclone development. Therefore, this event will be limited to some rain affecting Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, Haiti, eastern Cuba and Jamaica, with the most significant rainfall accumulations over the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico, especially between Monday and Wednesday this week. Here are some animations of accumulated rainfall projections until Wednesday. You can see that much of central and eastern Dominican Republic may record over 100 millimeters of accumulated rainfall. For Puerto Rico, the third tropical wave of the season and the trough will generate rainy conditions over the next few days, with some estimated accumulations of 2 to 5 inches over the next 3 days. Therefore, some local and urban flooding may occur at the beginning of this week. Now let's talk about when we might finally see the first tropical cyclone development in the Atlantic. Remember that the hurricane season began yesterday and runs until November 30th. But first, I wanted to invite you to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any videos during this hurricane season. It is important to go to the bottom of the video and click on the red subscribe button, then click the bell to receive notifications when I record new videos. Also, if you want to be a sponsor of Hurricane Info, go to the end of the video to learn more about the sponsorship plan. Let's go back to the infrared satellite image, where we can identify several atmospheric disturbances. Specifically, I wanted to mention that we have several tropical waves that have emerged from Africa in recent days. Currently, we have five tropical waves moving across the Atlantic, with the first one already crossing into the eastern Pacific. Although it is normal to see tropical waves emerging from Africa in May, it is noteworthy that these tropical waves have been unusually active this year. As we have mentioned in recent months, this could indicate a very active season. Remember that June is typically a quiet month in the Atlantic. And when we evaluate historical data or climatology, cyclones or tropical storms usually form in the Gulf of Mexico, Southeast United States, and Western Caribbean. This is where most tropical depressions have formed since records began, particularly concentrated in the Bay of Campeche, Eastern Gulf of Mexico, and Western Caribbean, as well as waters just north of the Bahamas, although with much less frequency. We have also seen cyclones develop between the Caribbean and Africa, but this is rare, and we do not anticipate cyclonic development between the Caribbean and Africa in the coming weeks. Significant changes in atmospheric dynamics are expected in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico starting the second week of June. This corresponds to the arrival of a very active phase of the Madden-Julian Oscillation, which will move through the eastern Pacific and Caribbean. It is during the second week of June that we anticipate the development of a Central American gyre, which can generate several low pressures that could have some cyclonic development, either in the waters of the eastern Pacific, south of Mexico, and west of Nicaragua and El Salvador, or in the waters of the central southern Gulf of Mexico and western Caribbean. In addition to the Madden-Julian Oscillation phase, remember that the Caribbean Sea's waters remain extremely warm, reaching levels never recorded for this date. Similarly, the waters in the Gulf of Mexico remain at very high values for this date, also unprecedented in history. The combination of the Madden-Julian Oscillation with very warm ocean surface temperatures can create favorable conditions for tropical cyclone development. Looking at long-term projections from global models, we start with the GFS Ensemble members, which, starting the second week of June, 
show several low pressures developing in the waters of the eastern Pacific, western Caribbean, and southern and central Gulf of Mexico. These projections are characteristic of a Central American gyre, where it is usually very difficult to predict where the low pressure will develop, whether in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean Sea, or eastern Pacific. Similarly, the European model ensemble also shows some members developing a low pressure in the waters south of Mexico or the Bay of Campeche and others in the Western Caribbean region. Remember that this will be from the second week of June. And in terms of probability, the European model ensemble has a 30 to 35 percent chance of developing a tropical depression by mid-June. And it currently favors the formation of a low pressure south of Mexico and south of the states of Guerrero and Chiapas. This is precisely the area marked by NOAA's Climate Prediction Center, projecting that between June 12th and 18th, this area will be monitored for the probability of tropical cyclone development. Remember, this is a long-term projection, so we will have many days to observe how the Madden-Julian Oscillation, tropical waves moving through the Caribbean and warm ocean temperatures interact. Here at Hurricane Info, I will continue to monitor and keep you updated on this forecast. Before I go, I wanted to invite you to consider becoming a sponsor of Hurricane Info. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the blue join button, and see the different sponsorship plans we have. As a sponsor, you could receive additional benefits. Well, with this, I say goodbye. Until the next video, I hope everyone has an excellent week.